Is our convenience more important than someone else's food supply? What if a staple food in your diet doubled in price overnight? Few people ever consider the true costs of the consumer goods they purchase. Today we're going to discuss how we can assess these true costs. Who, what, where, when, how. These are the essential questions that everyone must ask before doing any ass sustainability assessment. Many companies today are seeing the wisdom in doing sustainability assessments of their projects and are asking some of these questions. The companies who are participating in this drive towards greater corporate sustainability are not doing it at a risk to their profits or simply because they have good hearts. Mm -hmm. They are doing it because they realize sustainability assessments can help they are fiscally responsible, can help to mitigate risks, and they increase efficiency. They see the savings on the bottom line. And also, it feels good to do the right thing. <laughs> Corporations see that environmental impact assessments can help reduce costs, improve reputation, and avoid later remediation issues, but sometimes they don't think broadly enough about this problem. They're considering the where and the when of environmental impact assessments now more than they were before. Companies now are taking steps to, se to select suppliers that use more sustainable processes up the supply chain or are creating products that can be more safely disposed of down the supply chain. Let's look at how this type of thinking can be used when purchasing a car. You may try and make the most informed decision for the environment, but unless you take the entire fuel life cycle into consideration, you might forget an important factor in your assessment. Electric vehicles have recently dominated the market as an alternative way to be a good global consumer. Many people assume that because electric vehicles run on electricity, it's a great way to cut carbon. After all, petroleum, you don't have to burn petroleum to get electricity, it just comes out of the wall. <laughs> and while it's true that electric cars do lower the overall petroleum needed for transportation in America, this can be either a detriment or a benefit to our overall goal of reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Each region in America has its own unique fuel mix. Because of this, you might be driving an electric car that's fueled entirely on fossil fuels. Isn't that a bit of an oxymoron? Let's look at an example. In the Pacific Northwest, the primary source of energy comes from hydroelectric power generation. This has fewer emissions than most typical power plants and is considered renewable. However, in West Virginia, the, West, the primary source of energy comes from coal power generation, which has very high emissions. Therefore, owning and operating an electric vehicle in the Pacific Northwest would have significantly fewer emissions than in West Virginia. Now, we're not saying that electric vehicles are bad or that you shouldn't invest in them. In fact, they're an excellent product that will help us in our journey toward a cleaner energy future. We're simply trying to highlight the importance of well-informed decision-making. A holistic assessment tool can help both consumers and manufacturers to make more well-informed decisions about their products and their entire life cycles. Now, life cycle assessment is not a new thing by any means. Life cycle assessment can help us show the where and the when of different, of different products and ask these questions, you know, where are these impacts taking place? When are they better? And when are they worse on the whole life cycle stage? But it's not asking the deeper questions. It's not asking who. Who are the stakeholders that are being impacted by a certain product or development project? How and what? What are these different impacts and, and how do they infect people? We've developed a tool that asks these questions. We call it the question cube or the cube. It's quite clever, isn't it? <laughs> Along the three axes of the cube, we focus on a different question. How and what? What are the impacts and how do they impact stakeholders? Who? Who are the stakeholders that are impacted? And where and when along, do the, along the life cycle are these impacts occurring? By cross-referencing all these impacts in a three-dimensional model, we can be more confident that no impact was being overlooked. Let's look at how this tool could have been used in the, last, in the corn ethanol debate of the last decade. Clean and independent energy has always been a problem area for the American people. Our economy runs largely on the consumption of dirty fossil fuels. And while in the case of electricity, these fuels are largely sourced here in America, that's not the case for transportation fuels. On an average day in the US, we consume about 19 million barrels of oil. That's the equivalent of 800 million gallons. And that's per day. Clearly, we have some dependency issues. In 2007, 
many people believed that corn-derived ethanol was, as the Chicago Sun-Times put it, the magical elixir that would solve virtually every economic, environmental, and foreign policy problem on the horizon. It was supposed to be cleaner, cheaper, and best of all, sourced right here in the U.S. However, as investment in corn-based ethanol began to skyrocket, so too did the price of corn in the international market. This caused huge problems for our neighbors down south. The typical Mexican family of four consumes on average one kilogram of tortillas each day. Because of the price increase in corn, the price per kilo of corn went from 63 cents to a dollar and 59 cents. That's double the price, actually more than double the price. Um, and minimum wage in Mexico is $4.30. Therefore, many Mexican families had to find unhealthy substitutes for tortillas, which contributed at that point uh, calcium and protein to their diet. When I think about all the times that I chose to drive when I could have biked, mm -hmm. or decided not to take the train because I wanted to sleep in a half hour, when I realized that this mindset caused people all over Mexico to go without their staple foods, or that a child might have gone hungry because I took too long putting on my makeup in the morning, how could I not feel guilty? How do we solve this problem? If the major players in the corn ethanol rush had taken a moment to step back and truly consider the whole system's impacts of their investment, maybe things would have gone a little differently. We were trying to solve our economic and environmental problems, but at the great expense of another community's well-being. The only stakeholders that were being considered were the American stakeholders, and though we were asking how and what with regard to the environmental and economic issues, we were totally disregarding the social impacts and another stakeholder. Who? Who were the stakeholders that were impacted in this project? Not only the American energy companies and the owners of SUVs, but also people all over the world who consume corn and corn products. How and what? What were all those impacts and how did they affect those stakeholders? While the people behind this plan were trying to create greater wealth and better economic well-being for the American people, they were also unintentionally worsening the health and depriving the, the Mexican people of social well-being. If we as Americans had had the foresight to realize the impact that our development in corn ethanol would cause to the Mexican people, perhaps we would have taken a different path, like developing alternate forms of transport rather than just alternate forms of fuel. All of the funds and the subsidies that went towards developing corn ethanol and inadvertently causing hunger in Mexico, they could have gone instead towards the development of infrastructure for new commuter train lines or towards new develop development of new technology for more energy efficient private vehicles. Without a holistic assessment tool, we're fated to repeat our mistakes of the past. We will forever be forgetting that important stakeholder or not considering the environmental impacts of the disposal of some new super sustainable device we've created. Can we as a society continue on this path of unsustainable development with only taking into consideration what is in front of us and instead of looking at everything around us? Can businesses continue to operate in a business as usual manner without taking into consideration all the impacts in front of them. Over the past two years, we, along with others in our program, have been developing the cube, which juxtaposes along its three perpendicular axes the most important questions you must ask before doing any assessment. Who? Who are the stakeholders being impacted? What? What are the impacts? Is it impacting their water resources or is it impacting their education? How? How are these impacts affecting the stakeholders? Are they affecting them economically, socially, culturally? When and where do these impacts occur? Do they occur on the highway where your electric vehicle emits, uh, sorry, where in your, on the highway where your electric vehicle emits water vapor, or at the coal power plant where coal is burned to fuel it? By cross-referencing all of these impacts in one three-dimensional, in one three-dimensional tool, we can be sure that every impact on every level and at every stage of development has been considered for every stakeholder. Can anyone afford to be left out in the cold? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>